Well, everything is bigger in Texas, including the stakes for this year's Senate race. The latest Real Clear Politics average now showing Ted Cruz ahead of the progressive candidate Beto O'Rourke by seven points. All right, uh, syndicated radio host Dana Lash lives in Texas, joins us right now from Texas to comment on it. You know, uh, Dana, a lot of people are surprised that it has been as close it ha as it has been. Right now, uh, Cruz has opened up a lead of over five or six points, but nonetheless, why so close? Yeah, that's a great question, and good morning to everyone. It is a lot bigger here in Texas, and this race is, is super expensive, and it's a lot closer than people like me are comfortable with, to be quite honest. But, however, I also remember back to when Wendy Davis was running, and I think we still have to wait to s and see whether or not Robert O'Rourke, uh, Beta O'Rourke, is the male version of Wendy Davis, because progressives are really good at marketing, and they're very good at the Sun Tzu tactic of making themselves seem bigger and more successful than they are. And they did that during the Davis race, but they were yet of course, very unsuccessful because the turnout for Democrats and the enthusiasm ultimately waned. I don't know whether or not that's going to happen with or work because some of the polls say that there's a, as much as a you know a 10-point lead, seven-point lead. There's a UT Tyler poll that came out just the other day that showed a three-point lead between Cruz and or work. It all depends, of course, on where these Texas suburbs are going to go and where right. rural East Texas is going to go as well. Why is that, though? Because when you think of the state of Texas, you just think the Bush family, you think conservative. We know Ted Cruz is so smart. He ran for president. He has so much experience. And then you have O'Rourke, who is just um, surrounded by controversy with the car accident and so progressive. Yeah. So so what we don't think Texas is like. We think Texas with, you know, conservatives and cowboys. And it, it just why is it so close? It's hard for the rest of the country to understand that. Well, I think, Ainsley, you hit on some incredibly important topics because, you know, Beta or Work, this is a guy who talks about banning certain semi automatic firearms like the AR 15. Uh, this is a guy, of course, who denied leaving the scene of a crime at the at the last one of the last debates that he was at. And he was ultimately fact checked by some in mainstream media over that. And this is a guy who isn't incredibly friendly on energy, which is kind of important in a state like Texas. Uh, and so voters, I think, you know, immigration and energy and jobs are top priorities for Texas voters. However, one of the things, like we've seen in Nevada and we've seen in some other states, a lot of Californians have moved to Texas because Texas has been very successful mm. in luring a lot of businesses because of the no state income tax, the friendly business climate. And with those businesses that come to Texas, you have some of those employees that come with them. In fact, it's changed so much in Texas that uh, my friends in real estate, have they've said that the market has changed. In fact, when people in Texas put their homes on the market, now they have to cater to what they call the California buy. So that's one of the things that's playing in here, too. Yeah, you got Austin, who used to be like that. Now it's spreading. So that's one of the Republicans would look at the negative things about being so attractive with low tax states. Ironically, it's Democrats yep. who hike the taxes, and then they're the ones leaving for low taxes. Same thing's happening in Florida to a degree and in, uh, and in Tennessee, Nashville specifically. Yeah, and this is one of the things that Bader O'Rourke has said that he's on board for. I mean, he's completely would rubber stamp if Nancy Pelosi, if heaven forbid, Democrats were able to regain the House. I mean, they, this is this isn't hyperbole. I mean, I'm not I'm not fear mongering for the lack of a better way to put it. They've said that they would raise taxes. They would also be involved in rolling back uh, ta tax cuts on uh, businesses. We'd see a lot of those gains. We'd lose those. We'd see a lot of this economic growth. We would lose that, and we would also see a lot of petty politics emerge. And the agenda that they have said and or work has said that he supports is not an agenda that voters supported in 2016. This isn't an agenda that they've gone for. I think a lot of this is going to come down on enthusiasm and mm -hmm. turnout. And I hope people remember this. This is not a midterm to sit out. Yeah. And we'll know it, how many people do sit out and how many people vote <laughs> next Wednesday morning. Dana Lash down in Texas. That's right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dana.